What's up y'all and welcome back to my channel. Thank y'all so much for being here. We are on day 34. Yes, 34 of our 100 Days to Brave Daily Devo. And so I'm so glad that you're here. If you're new here, then welcome. That you are now an awesome part of our VS family and we're so thankful for that. So, we are talking about one thing today. One, 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 one. Yes, we are talking about one calling. <laughs> So we've talked about dreams and we've talked about what we're created to do and the difference between them and how we deal with them and all that kind of stuff. But the crazy thing is we're talking about how today we have one calling. That's it. Just one. So let's talk about it. We're going to go ahead and jump right in with prayer and then we'll get started. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come to you, Father, and just thank you so much for all your many blessings, Lord. We just ask that you be in this time of study, Father, and just be with everybody who's watching this video. And we just thank you so much and love you. And it's in your precious name we pray. Amen. Whew. All right, you guys. So, yes, one calling. That is the title of today's lesson. And we're going to be in 1 Corinthians again. We were in 1 Corinthians 12 yesterday. And we're also going to be in 1 Corinthians 12 today. And today's verses are 4 through 6. And I'm actually going to read them out of the Holman Christian again, just because I like the way that it puts it. And so it's 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 6, okay? Let's see if I have words up. It says, Now there are different gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different ministries, but the same Lord. And there are different activities, but the same God is active in everyone and everything. Okay? So key, you know, similarity between every single part of those verses is... There are different this, but the same God. There's different this, but the same this, okay? And so in everything, there's different gifts, different ministries, and different activities, but the God never changes, okay? And so literally, the thing that really kind of sticks out to me the most is our calling is from God. And so what God gives us in that calling is never changing. Our calling that He has placed on our lives does not change. There may be so many other things um, in your life that come and go, but God's calling on our life will never change. And that's really kind of cool because once we figure out what it is, we don't have to worry about it ever changing. It is always going to be there. So she kind of talks about how, um, if you remember back in school when you were writing five paragraph essays, which I loved, um, English. And so writing a good story was never hard for me. Absolutely loved it. But you always had, you know, the opening paragraph and the closing paragraph and then three main points. And so those were your five different sections of that story that you had to write. And then you had your thesis statement. And that was kind of, it seems to me in my head, more scientific. But you always had those three main points that referred back to that main point of what you were doing. And so how she incorporates this into our life is that thesis statement is our calling. So that is what God has put as our like, that's it, okay? So everything in our life is going to come off of this thesis statement, right? And so whatever our job is, whatever activities we do, where we live, all those kind of things come off of that calling, and so once we figure out what our calling is, everything else can stem from that. And so our jobs change. I have literally had several, we'll just say several jobs. Even within the past three years, I've had three jobs, okay? Because I had a job for all of 2018. I just started a job at the beginning of 2019. And then 2017, I was at a different job. And so I'm at the one I'm at now. I'm good to go. I don't plan on changing anytime soon. I hope I don't have to. But that's something that's so crazy is those things change, okay? Um, you can even, like she talks about here, she has a friend who is a bass player for a band. But he's also the tour manager for that band. So he has two different jobs but he's still got one calling and that's serving God through music. And so that's his calling is to serve God through music. But he's doing that as a bass player and as a tour manager. So he's got those two separate jobs. So when we have our calling, I'll just use myself for example. I have the calling on my life of women's ministry. I know that's what God's called me to. Now that may stem down to like several different things. One of the things I do is I do these YouTube videos and I go through Bible studies and I want to show people that they can live a fun, energetic Christian lifestyle and still, you know, have fun. It doesn't have to be strict and rigid and all these kind of things. They can still, you know, 
we had our Halloween, we had a Halloween party tonight for our youth group and you can still do those kind of things and put Jesus completely 100% in the middle of it and have fun. You don't have to be that holier than thou person that a lot of people put us as. And so, you know, you don't have to be under that label per se. Another thing is I do want to open my own business. I want to have a business that is fun and trendy and I don't know if it's going to be clothes or home decor or business stuff like notebooks and, you know, crafty type things or if it's going to be all of that combined. I'm not really sure, you know. Um, we want to open a coffee shop that, I mean, all these different things. It's kind of like if you think of a pyramid. And so I, you, you put your, uh, I wish I had something. Oh, here, we'll draw it out. So it's like if you have, okay, and we're going to put calling up here at the top and then all these different jobs okay so we'll just do this okay so you have your calling up here at the top of your pyramid and then literally you have your work job you can have whatever you're doing at church whether you're leading the music or you're doing this or that you could have a direct sales business opening your own business um, you know literally just taking your kids to all their different activities and being a positive role model that kind of thing I mean there's so many different things that you can express like used as expressions of your calling okay and so that's what's just really key is you have your main thesis but all these different bullet points and so you know if you're writing um like when my husband prepares his sermons um he will have like so many main points that like this past um uh, sermon he had seven okay so he had seven main points and i'm going to flip over here and show you and so his his sermon was on what's in it for me out of Romans 5 and so he has literally point one two three and I went through and I was writing down so I had his main point which was what's in it for me his title of his sermon he had seven main points and then off those main points there was little things that I wrote down for each one and so that's it you have your you have your calling for me it's women's ministry and then I have so many different points under that that I'm going to utilize that calling and how I'm going to express that calling in my life. And so for most people, when God calls you to women's ministry or when call, God calls you to youth ministry or when God calls you to music ministry or when God calls you to missions or whatever, a lot of people don't quit their main job during the week and go do that full time. Are there people out there who do? Yes, there are people who are called to full time ministry and that is their, you know, their whole goal and missions you know, in life is to do that full time. Now, they may still have a family. They may still do other things, but for most of their life, that's what they're doing is their ministry. And there are people who are called to that. And I think you can be called to say women's ministry and then it grow into full time ministry. I totally think that can happen. Um, but there are people just like we have full-time youth pastors, full-time pastors, full-time missionaries who are overseas and crazy places, you know, living each day out for the Lord in mission work. And so you can definitely um, have those full-time, but there are a lot of people who, like my husband and myself, have other full-time jobs during, you know, during the week that we do. But we still just like we just had this youth, uh, how I keep wanting to say Christmas. I hope I didn't say Christmas before. Can't remember, but we just had this youth Halloween party, and I mean we've been planning for this for weeks, and then the past couple days have been crazy trying to get ready for it. But that's just that's what we do because that's what the calling that God has placed in our lives. So while it may look like a sacrifice to some, and it is, um, we still. You know that's we know that that's where one of our focuses of our calling needs to be is we have to make those sacrifices with not doing our own thing on this Saturday because we are doing the youth you know the youth party um, and she says here jobs will come and go but your calling won't whether it's mothering mentoring teaching nursing building it's not what you do but how you do it and that is so true because our calling is obviously from God and so however we do everything else in our life should mirror God and our calling to an extent and so that's just something that we have to you know remember and she says the ways you express your calling are different and of course how we've talked about this whole Bible study these whole 34 days that we've been through is how do you know you ask you ask God okay um, prayer Bible study 
you know, don't be a try, don't be scared to like try different things, you know, just like with doing these YouTube videos. I had no idea that 34 days later we'd be here still. I'm just going to be honest with you. I know I said, yeah, we're going to do this every single day, but here we are 34 days later. I had no idea that there would be people, even though it may only be one or two, that there's people viewing my videos. No clue. It's crazy. So try different things. See what works for you. See what doesn't. Um, she says, don't let fear of f failure keep you from what God wants you to do. And that is so stinking true, you guys. Do not let being scared stop you. Because one of my biggest fears in life is failing. And failing in a huge major way. I don't know what that means. But it terrifies me to not succeed at something terrifies me and so even starting these videos I was like if I don't make it to 100 days it's gonna be real embarrassing but and that's got at first that was one of those things that motivated now it's just because I'm learning so much from this and God is really using this to teach me and then I pray that somebody else is getting something out of it so don't let that fear of failure failure keep you from what God's called you to do so her be brave call to action is work on writing a thesis statement for your life. What would you say is the theme of all the jobs, dreams, and opportunities you've had in your life? So that one's crazy. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I haven't even had a chance to think about this yet. But work on writing a thesis statement for your life. What would you say is the theme of all the jobs, dreams, and opportunities that you've had in your life? So yeah, crazy stuff there. But definitely know that once you know what your calling is, it is not going to change. And we can find peace and we can kind of find a rest and hope in that of not having to, once we know what it is, now we just got to figure out how to go out there and use it for the world and for God. So, all right, you guys, I am exhausted. It has been a long day. I'm going to go ahead. We're going to wrap up this video for tonight. If you would, I would love it if you would just subscribe to my channel. That way you get to know um, whenever I post new videos, you can click that little bell and that'll actually send you an email notification. And then if you would, if you'd be ever so kind, it'd make me smile to give this video a big thumbs up. I'd greatly appreciate it. And yeah, y'all have a wonderful rest of your evening. Drop some comments below if you have any prayer requests. Um, maybe you have your thesis statement. I'd be curious to see what yours is. Um, or yeah, just if you have any questions or anything like that, drop them below. But again, you guys have a wonderful rest of your evening and I will talk to y'all later. Bye y'all.